Hello. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, it's uh, very nice to be in this old venue where I used to go to school dances in the 90s. So that's nice. Uh, and uh, uh, my name is Osa Bjarndell and I, I'm trained as an architect, but I work uh, mostly with uh, urban planning and urban design and working with cities and the uh, development of cities. Uh, we always need to think ahead, a long time ahead, because uh, uh, we work with really big scale projects and it takes a long time to build them. So uh, we always have long timelines. Uh, and uh, so usually like 20, 30 years ahead, that's, that's nothing, nothing out of the ordinary for us. But uh, even in that perspective, Kira and I is quite, quite an exception to have to move a whole city and to do it over the course of 100 years. That's quite something. And it needs a lot of power, deceptions and lies, I think. So, <laughs> this is Kiruna today. Uh, Kiruna is in the north of Sweden. It's about uh, 1,400 kil kilometers north of Malmö. So it's like north of the Arctic Circle, it's far away. And uh, the city was founded in the year 1900. Uh, and it was founded to, uh, to uh, accommodate the people who moved here to work in the mine with housing. Uh, and uh, this mine is a very big mine and it's very important for the whole Swedish economy actually. Uh, the revenue from this mine, about, uh, it, it gives about 1-2% to 2 of Sweden's GMP is from the revenue. So this is a big national importance, this mine. And that's also why now that a couple of years ago they not started noticing that the, the ground on, on top of the mine was starting to collapse with big deformations, you can see them here. This is actually the mine up here, and you can see the deformations, like this moon-like moon landscape in front of the mine. And the iron ore is kind of like a big slab that goes underneath the city. So now rapidly, this deformation is coming closer and closer to the city of Kiruna. And since uh, the city and the mine is so important, the city has to move. Uh, we can't stop mining. <laughs> so, uh, and this was kind of what we knew when we, the, me and my colleagues, we went up to Kiruna about a year ago to take part in, a, we were invited to take part in a competition, architectural competition, together with nine other teams about how the future city center of Kiruna, what, what that was supposed to look like. So this is kind of the deformation that they're expecting, the progress of it. And it's kind of, they're running out of time, you can see in 2015, the city starts to fall down. They actually already have to close the train station, and that's, that's disappearing now. And now the city hall is next, and in a couple, 10, 15 years, big parts of the city center, and another couple of decades, the whole city will be gone. Uh, so, and this was kind of what we knew when we went up there a year ago, uh, that this was happening. We knew a bit of the history, and of course, how important the mine is. But as we were, when we were there, we learned a lot about more. We were there for a couple of really intense days, uh, moving around in the city, talking to people. And we learned what this meant for, for the people of Kiruna. And there were four things that kind of stood out for us. The first thing, of course, is the trauma. The sadness of losing your home, your home city, and all these kind of collective, these places that are full with collective and individual memories that are just gonna be gone forever. So that's a big, big, a big uh, thing that has to be handled for the population of Kir Kiruna. But there is also another thing. A lot of they, they've known this has been going on for a while. So many of the people in Kiruna they're kind of pragmatic and they're used to living in the shadow of the mine. So they 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 kind of are at the stage now where they want to move on. They want to take action. They want to kind of plan their lives, and they are kind of experiencing a very big frustration now because they're in limbo. They don't know what's going to happen to their town. There's no plan for wh what, what will we do, where, where should we move? So there's a big uh, crisis of confidence in the people ruling Kiruna that they can't like, decide. So they're, they're really frustrated, the people of Kiruna. So that was the first thing that we learned. The second thing is there is no safe ground in all of Kiruna, not in the city and like, not in the landscape around. Everything is a potential mine. So there's no, there's no, no ground we can trust 
that as an urban designer, it's, uh, it's really stressful. So, uh, <laughs> so this, of course, need we need to be have a very flexible plan. We always do that when we plan. When we we always need that when we plan like for 20, 40, 50 years into the future. There's so much about the future that we don't know. Uh, there are so many opportunities and challenges that we can't dream of them now. We just need to have some kind of pre preparation to that are the schemes that we propose can handle them. But this is extreme, of course. And then the third thing that we learned about was uh, this kind of, of um, the relationship between the mine and the city. And historically, that's been a very unevil, uneven relationship. Uh, the, the, the city kind of stands, stands and falls with the mine. They're totally uh, dependent on the mine. But that is uh, slowly starting to change. And like many other businesses around the world, the, the mining company, El Coabe, have noticed that they need to, uh, to get the workforce that they need. And they need more and more skilled workforce. They need, it's getting more and more advanced with the mining, especially as deeper they go down into the mine. Uh, these people want, they don't just want to work, so to get to kind of recruit and keep these people, they need to offer something more. They need to offer a great place to live. So they start to need a city to, for good housing and for all those other things that comes in, in in living in a city, the urban life. But they also need a city that is self-sufficient, that can offer other kinds of employment than working in the mine, for, so that the, the people can bring their families and their spouses, husbands and wives and everything, also can find a job. And that's a really big challenge for Kirana today, because there is nothing except for the mine. And the fourth and last thing that we found out was people have been living in this area for thousands of years. So when the city of Kiruna was founded about 100 years ago, it was founded just on top of three Sami villages. So they have been migrating their reindeers here for thousands of years when they go from not winter to summer camps. And uh, th that was not taken in consideration in the year 1900 when they founded Kiruna, they just put it on top of their important land. And they, uh, as Kiruna has uh, been uh, developing, they've been more and more squeezed together so they can't, they can't really continue their way of life soon. It's getting to be really a problem for them as well. So, uh, problems, problems, problems. <laughs> and, but uh, uh, still, the, the kind of big feeling that we got when we were in Kiruna was also that this is a really loved city. And the, the people of Kiruna are extremely proud of their city. And it's a very international city. It's very well connected to lots of other places around the world. And this, um, and it is a, this kind of this com uh, really uh, gathering of a lot of social and uh, urban overlapping of people and social connections that are kind of put here in the midst of this big, great Arctic landscape. And this is something that the people, they love it, this and they want to stay. They're not just sure that they can. So that's the big problem. And, and since uh, working with cities, or what defines cities, actually, that is, it is the people who live there and the kind of social connections that they do, the economical, cultural networks that they build, that is the city. And if we we're going to talk about moving a city, to make that a successful move, that those connections, networks, that's what we have to move. And we, if we can do that, there is a chance that Kiruna can survive this. And that kind of, this feeling of, um, so it goes back to trust, since they don't trust that there is a plan and that they can, they can stay there. Uh, we need to, to, uh, to present some kind of vision for the future that, so they feel that they are uh, secure enough to uh, invest their time and energy and money and uh, commitment into Kiruna also in the future. So we need to create the feeling that Kiruna is going to be there forever. Uh, so that's was kind of the, the, the vision or the motto that we came up with for our, our proposal. And now the big, big question is, how do we get there from the place where we are today to this place where we want to be in the future? Uh, so to kind of rally all these different things that need to happen around a couple of strategies that we all kind of can, can work with. We came up with these three that's up here, uh, step by step, leave no one behind, and the new ideal city. Just gonna yeah. 
So I'm just going to go through this briefly. I just need to know how much time I have, because I can talk about this forever. But uh, the first one, step by step. And this is about a couple of things, but uh, of course, uh, we thought, for, first of all, we thought it was really important that through the, the, this whole process, uh, process that Kiruna it is one city all the time, so that we don't start developing a, like a satellite uh, city center somewhere else that for many years are going to uh, be in, uh, can compete with existing. So we need it to be one city as this move goes along. Uh, and, and the other thing is that, uh, well, a city is more, it's not a static thing, it's something that kind of keeps changing all the time. Uh, so we need, even though we need this end picture of knowing what would it look like in 100 years, we also really need to know what the first step is going to be, and that's the, actually the biggest challenge to defining the first step. And we wanted this first step to kind of be, be grounded in the existing city, and uh, Therefore, after an, uh, we found this place that was in the east of the existing city center, was, there was a commercial point, and it was, uh, we learned that that was kind of an important meeting place in Kiruna today. And that was also along one of the main roads connecting the city center to the airport. So that became our starting point, to develop that existing point and then let the new city kind of grow along this existing main road eastwards, away from the mine. And as time uh, progresses and that new things fall down in the mine and we need to put new public, uh, public places, we can put them along this kind of uh, this road and making new kind of public nodes along it. And in this way, we can also can be flexible in our planning that for each step, we can see what, what, is, the, what is it we want to do right now, what are the challenges we need to, to work with. Uh, so that was the first one, step by step. And this one, leave no one behind, uh, is a very important one and it has to do with getting all the people of Kiran on board. Uh, so we came up with a couple of three different things that we wanted to do to, to make this happen or at least have the possibility to happen. The first one we call the Ka Kiruna Dialogue. Uh, and that's uh, about information, getting the information out to the people of Kiruna, what is happening right now and in the long term. And because uh, that was the big frustration. And, and people are different in how we can take in information, also how much we want to kind of interact. Some just want the information, some want to act on it, be able to, to uh, have a dialogue about it. But we're all different in that way, so we need to both reach out to people and invite them. And we need to use the existing kind of social structures, formal and informal, that's already in the city, to get the information out through them. We need to be with the people out. They shouldn't have to do an extra labor to go and get informed. We need to get the information to them where they are. So that was the first thing. And then we thought of another thing that we wanted to do, and that's this big image is supposed to illustrate, something called the Kiruna portal. And this is for when you want to take action you go to the Kiruna portal. So this is like a, both a physical and virtual meeting point for uh, the people of Kiruna, businesses, uh, builders, constructors, uh, uh, different kind of developers, to meet within the actual projects, the actual things that are going to be the new city center, when they're going to be built and the new companies and whatever. So for instance, we imagine that here is the assembly hall for the new houses. Well, this is where they're going to be built, and you can visit, uh, visit and see your new house being built. And we can also uh, reuse a lot of the old building materials as, as the houses are being torn down. Uh, and this is both an environmental thing, but most of all an emotional thing. You can bring the windows and the beautiful door or an old fireplace or something from, from your old house and put it in the new. And together, that would be a richer thing in the future. Uh, and then the third thing that we thought of was a Kiruna Biennale. And this is about talking about your experience and kind of gathering up all the people of Kiruna. And they can share with the world how, what is happening to the city and how they're dealing with it. They can invite other, other cities that are in the same situation or just other people that are interested. And they can also talk about the next step. So this, this was like the third thing that we thought would be important. And these, all, all these three things, the dialogue, the portal and the Biennale has to do with making the move, movement of the city center a collective experience. 
for all the people of Kiruna. So it's something that happens to everyone and not just the individuals that are affected at each time of the of the of this long process. Okay, and the third is the new ideal city. And the reason why we talk about the ideal city here is when uh, the existing city center was uh, created, it was actually considered an ideal city. Uh, it was uh, very much studied and copied. And it was also the way, one of the main things was how it's situated and in, on this kind of so south slope and how it uh, interacts with the climate. It kind of protects from the northern winds and taking the sun and the views of the south. But that is one situation, and the new situation where the new city center is moving is, ha has another climate, and there are, we are in another time, and there are, we need new principles for how we design this new part of the city. Uh, and what we wanted to do, of course, was to uh, take these, when we talked about to the people of Kiruna what they thought was important or what they loved about the city, this kind of combination of this urban density and the, the, the social life of the city, and they're very, very, then very closely the big landscape and the open landscape. That was this combination of this contrast is what they love about the city. And we wanted that to, to be there also in the future when the city kind of grows eastward. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the structure for the, the kind of for the new city as it moves along and it kind of develops along this existing main road. And we try to put as much density and happenings around this, this core of the city. Uh, so this is where, where, where as much people as, as possible are living and working and where they meet and interact. So this is going to be kind of the, the heart of the city. And then, but then just a couple of blocks out, the city stops in a very sharp, edge of the city and you have the landscape. Uh, so that's going to be kind of the character of the city, this kind of really w uh, quick movement from very dense urbanism to kind of end of the city. And this is then an image of the new, uh, one, a new city uh, square of Kiruna with a new train station a new city hall, and this is along this kind of main street with the, tra the, the, you know, the cable way connecting, cable cars connecting the station to the, to the mine and to the airport. And then just a couple of blocks away, this is the situation where the city kind of builds a front and looks out into the landscape and also invites people into the city. So, with these three strategies, uh, we want the kind of aim of working like this is to gather all these different things that need to be happening simultaneously and all these different processes does, that is moving a city to kind of still have some kind of uh, moving in the same kind of direction or something they can rally around. And they're not just, they don't just handle physical structure, but also all the social structures and, uh, and other things as well. Uh, so we can talk about connections and density and dialogue and process, and economy and ecology with the same kind of three important strategies. And then the brief of the competition was actually just to look 20 years ahead. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we did that as well. So this is maybe what Kiruna could look like in, uh, in 20 years. Some of the new kind of urban nodes have been established. Uh, but we really, really felt the need to go further. So we wanted to go to the year 2113. So this is what we imagine it could be if you kind of fly over it in 100 years. They're just getting ready for the 50th Biennale. And uh, the city is now going to develop into a self-sufficient city. Uh, and it's like a key city in the Barent region. The mine is emptied, or the old mine is empty. It's been transformed into an industrial uh, park and a kind of a historical heritage. And the deformations that are closest to the, the mine has now settled, so the reindeers can come back and walk in their old tracks again. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we think this could be really, like it's still a city that is really urban, but still very well connected to its, the landscape around it. And just to sum up, why do we need to plan 100 years ahead? It's a bit silly, maybe. You know. uh, 
Uh, and the reason is, of course, as I said, in urban planning, there's, we need long timelines. We need to plan on lots of the things that we propose. They, they, they take a long time to plan. They take a long time to build. There are big political decisions. There are lots of econ economical things. There are expensive things to do. So we usually need like start planning them 20 years ahead or something for them to actually be there when we need them. But 100 years, of course, has more to do with the human aspect of uh, the people in Kiruna living, in li the people living in Kiruna right now to feel, now in 2013 to feel that uh, for in their perspective and the perspective of their children, Kiruna is going to be there forever. And that's important. Thank you.